Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 229th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to talk about truth, more specifically our truth, our individual unique truths, and how we can let that or our truth emerge. But before I get into that, today's petite plaisir is a Francophile find and also ties in well with our theme today. I'll talk about it more at the end of today's episode, so stay tuned. But let's get into our topic, how to let your truth emerge. I was inspired by for this episode by the season that I find myself in, autumn, and autumn I found myself enjoying a, more than just a handful of beautiful walks this October and the latter half of September, and I've shared a few images on my Instagram feed, but the, the, the leaves have just been brilliant, the trees and the weather with the blue sky here that we've been having has just been wow, but it prompted some ideas to come to the surface. Autumn, as we know, brings change, and that change brings many revelations and rewards. From the harvest of bountiful fruits and vegetables that have been waiting for months to reach their peak of flavor, to the brilliant turning of colors seen in the leaves and needles from deciduous and the rare deciduous conifer trees, such as the American larch or tamarack, which we have here and I've been waiting patiently for them to turn. I actually went on a walk this last weekend thinking they may have, and they haven't yet, but I'm definitely going to go back soon because I have a feeling they're about to. But this is a once a year opportunity for us to see these rewards, to see this beauty, to, to taste and, and, and savor this goodness that we reap from the harvest. At the same time, autumn reveals how well taken care of or how attentive we have been to say the crops, if we're the farmer, or the woods with regards to enough rain, enough sun, to, en- to enable these items or these m- gifts of Mother Nature, as we would call them, to reach this seasonal stage of harvest naturally and offer their full expression. As it pertains to each of us, we too are on a journey of self-discovery if we choose to be. We are on this patiently figuring it out, going forward, not sure exactly what's going to happen, but doing our best to invest if we choose to do that. I was recently listening to Ina Garten, who was sitting down for a conversation with Katie Couric um, as she has a new cookbook coming out next week. And we'll talk about that here on the blog in the coming days and weeks. She was talking about her career in food and her journey And at one point, she offers the advice of looking back into our youth, perhaps as early as your early childhood, to be reminded of what fascinated us. For her, it was cooking and baking as a young girl, a very young girl, something that she has a very clear recollection of, but it was not encouraged by her family. This something for Ina wasn't heeded until she was 30, at which point she, as we, she, we famously know, opened her specialty grocery or, or, or food store, Barefoot Contessa, and then at the age of 50, having sold her business after 20 years, began writing cookbooks. But it was when she reflected back on what she loved to do as a child, she said, that really helped give her the key to figure out what was true for her. Now, I relate this to fall because it takes time for the truth to emerge. It takes time for a young, healthy sapling that's being planted in the spring to reach fall and to, to, for us to see, oh, it didn't die on me. It actually was fed well. It was watered well. It got enough nutrients from the soil. It got enough sunshine. And it's turning, it's, even if it has only 10 leaves, it's turning its particular color that it, w- it said it would when I bought it at the nursery. Had we not taken care of it properly, 
it wouldn't have reached that stage or it wouldn't have shown such beauty. As I have shared in previous posts and episodes, and I'll, I'll show or share the link to this particular post that, I, that I'm thinking of, timing plays a role in our lives. And so too does the tenacity to remain curious about discovering our deepest and most sincere truths. Truths such as why you enjoy the company you, you enjoy versus the company that never quite leaves you inspired or perhaps worse. Truths such as what sparks your laughter, deepens your joy, and elevates your motivation to try something new. The editor of the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalistic endeavor that broke the Watergate investigation in 1973, Ben Bradley, is well known for a simple phrase, the truth emerges. And while, yes, he is speaking more specifically about investigative reporting, I have experienced it to be true in the journey of life as well. If we examine the significant decisions that have led us to where we are today, at that time, we may not have known with deep insightful clarity why we were drawn to, say, a particular college as an 18-year-old or 17-year-old, or a particular person, or maybe not drawn to a particular person, a certain hobby or, or destination on the globe to go visit. But if we take the time to thoughtfully examine in hindsight, the powerful ahas as to why may become more crystallized. I began to do this for myself regarding why I prefer to live on my own, and I have done so my entire adult life since undergrad. It has taken me nearly 20 years to understand this truth for, for myself. And that's the key. It's for ourselves. It's for the individual. We cannot take someone else's truth and apply it to our lives exactly in a way that is plagiarizing. And no one can ever truly be appreciative of a life that is not sincerely constructed. Yes, we can absolutely gain inspiration from, from others' lives, but then we must apply that inspiration to the individual that we are. Back to the truth with regards to the one that I shared a moment ago about living alone. The truth that I came to see with unwavering clarity was that as a young girl, being busy was valued and being still physically still, not so much. Only with a few select people was enjoying my own company allowed. And I have to share this, that being able to be silent while together with another is truly one of the most comforting aspects of a partnership or friendship for me. And over the years, you know, I've shared this with people of all different types of relationships, platonic, romantic, collegial, and I've, I've realized that that's not the case for everyone. Not everyone enjoys being silent with someone. Um, but I also know that there are people that do as well. And, and that was a big aha for me. And, and I also realized that there were even fewer people still that accepted that it was okay for me to be in my own company and also to be truly who I was. Because what I found is that I was editing myself in the company of others. Even if I was able to be, to be quiet, I was editing how I responded to things. I was editing uh, myself when I was getting excited when I saw a particular you know, movie or if I saw a particular information in a book because I was reading or if I saw a particular exhibit, if I was at a museum I was, and if I was with somebody else, I was editing myself. Which is why I have curated a life where I can be exactly who I am when I am at home and let my creativity dance as it which wishes. The truth in this lesson was for me truly liberating. And I know that that's not something that everybody desires as far as their living situation. But for me, that is what I have come to find to be true. And as I said, there are some people that I can truly be myself with, but they are few and far between. And I recognize that it doesn't mean those other people that I can't be myself with are bad or, or there's something wrong with how they live. It's just that it's different and I need to be thoughtful in who I choose to spend my intimate time with in my home, in my sanctuary, when I need to relax and truly just unwind. Now, I share this and I don't think that I'm alone in this, but I also know that not everyone's like that. And so it's just being aware that we are all a little different. So how can each of us encourage the truth of who we are and, and what we are capable of? How can we encourage it to come forth? Simply live consciously. Living consciously doesn't mean you have to examine every little detail of your life to death. We can analyze and we should analyze. 
And I don't think when we look at people who do this, we say, oh, stop overanalyzing. I don't think that's very fair or very nice. That's how some people figure it out. But we also need to figure it out and move forward. Figure it out and move forward, not dwell. I think there's a difference there. But the whole idea of examining and living consciously is one of the fundamental premises of living simply luxuriously. Make sure, and this is what it states in the mission statement, make sure you aren't being led around by the nose. And if we're making sure we're not being led around by the nose, then we are living consciously. In other words, ask questions such as, what draws you to the decisions you are making? Is it you intrinsically or is it an external influence? Ask yourself, what brings you peace? What brings you joy? As well, what brings you pleasure? And I've provided links for each of those questions to try to dive deeper into that to figure that out for yourself if you're interested. There are many factors in life that we can neither control or influence, but we can learn to recognize more confidently opportunity and information that will help us live our lives more authentically. But we can only do this if we are paying attention. In other words, living consciously, listening and then letting go of expectations. The truth of who we are and who we will become is forever emerging as we are dynamic individuals full of more potential than our limited perspectives can even imagine at this very moment. Even those of us who think we have ourselves figured out, (laughs) there's still more chapters to learn and experience and enjoy. But so long as we are striving forward, so long as we remain curious, New aha moments will cross our paths as more truth is given to us. So why not keep exploring, keep applying what you learn, and with each piece of information you gather, your world becomes more enriching, more enjoyable, and more inspiring as others observe you growing and thus blossoming. Now, I've shared on the show notes um, many different links to, to previous posts and episodes, the ones I mentioned above about peace, joy, and pleasure, but I've also included a few more. Just recently, last Wednesday, in fact, I wrote a post that kind of dovetails with this episode. It's called, Why Not Be Exactly Who You Are? And I share a, an individual experience that inspired that. So I've provided a link on the show notes to that. But I've also included older posts, one that's called or titled The How of Tailored Simplicity. So it's, it really is about tailoring our lives. And let me just give you an example of what I mean by that. And this happened just recently. I've been meticulously but thoughtfully going through the media that I absorb through news sources, subscriptions, things like that. Because I realized, as I shared over the summer, that I was overwhelmed with all this information. Some of it was helping me, some of it was definitely not helping me. And I wanted to make sure that I fed my brain and my, my being well. So I've gone through that. And just recently, I edited down the news publications that I've subscribed to. But I also didn't eliminate most of them entirely. I just edited them to how often I read them. So for example, I was subscribing to this one news publication and I received it every single day. Now it's a great publication, for me, I, I do find that I, I grab information from it that I use for my life and also here on the blog, but I realized I didn't need it every single day. And so I reached out to them and I said, hey, I don't see that you offer a weekend edition, but is it possible? And in fact, there was that option. I just wasn't on the website, at least not the one I was looking at. So I was really happy about that. It saved me some money, but also gave me what I knew worked well for my life. And then a few others I edited out of my life entirely. But the thing about it is, is our life is up to us to tailor. We just have to be consciously aware of what works and what doesn't. And we can do this regularly. This is not a one and done job. And that's exciting too. And the last link that I'll share with you on on the show notes that I think you might be interested in, if you're interested in this topic, are three simple steps to designing your best life. So those are all in the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 229. Now, before I get to today's petite plaisir, I would like to introduce you to the sponsors of today's episode. 
If you are someone who is looking to get their finances in order, or perhaps you are a small business owner or an entrepreneur like myself, the NEAT company may just be the cloud storage intuitive financial organizational solution you've been looking for. NEAT streamlines accounting and tax related workflows, giving time back to your small business or your life so that you can get to what matters most. Be assured that you will never lose an expense as it enables you to capture receipts quickly and easily from either a snap of a photo with your phone or uploading a document on your computer or even scanning them. You will also be able to maximize your IRS deductions and rest easy as your taxes will be IRS audit proof. The Neat Company is a low cost financial management solution that will improve not only your productivity, but make tax prep easier, save you time and ease your mind. As a simple, sophisticated listener, Neat is offering a 30-day free trial. Visit neat.com slash simple. Again, to take advantage of a 30-day free trial, visit neat.com slash simple. Finding the perfect bra that looks good, feels comfortable, and most importantly, fits great takes time. And recently, I was introduced to a brand that does all three, La Mystere. They design beautiful lingerie that looks stylish and most importantly, feels amazing. Offering sizes A through H, they are also an accessible brand regardless of where you live or shop. Sold at the finest retailers like Bloomingdale's, Dillard's, Saks, and Lord Taylor, where you can have a one-on-one fitting with one of their brand ambassadors. And if you are crunched for time, you can also schedule a Skype fitting with a certified bra fitter on their website at lamistere.com. As a listener of this podcast, 50 of our listeners can get a free La Mystere cosmetics bag with their purchase. Go to lamistere.com slash gift. Add the bag to your cart, add your other purchases, and then use promo code SIMPLE to knock the price of the bag to zero. That's L-E-M-Y-S-T-E-R-E.com slash gift and enter promo code SIMPLE. As someone who loves to cook, having a helping hand to prepare for the meals is welcomed, especially during those busy weeks. That's where HelloFresh comes in. There are three plans to choose from, classic, veggie, or family. I chose the classic most recently as I can tailor it for two to four people, and I also get to choose how many meals I want that particular week between two and four. They will then send enough ingredients for the number of people I have selected to enjoy the meal. HelloFresh has thought of everything as each box is made up of fresh, responsible, responsibly obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high-rated trusted sources. Whether you are a beginner or a pro in your home kitchen, you will feel confident when cooking HelloFresh as they provide simple recipes outlined on pictured step-by-step instruction cards. And if you are a curious eater or have adventurous eaters in your household, HelloFresh's Global Eats option brings authentic international dishes and flavors to home cooks for exciting new meals. All the ingredients come pre-measured in handy labeled meal kits so you know which ingredients go with which recipe. And I can attest, each recipe will only take you 30 minutes or less to make and enjoy. I've enjoyed many of their meals and one of their favorites, my favorites, is their hamburger on a brioche bun with a very unique relish that incorporates the tomatoes and onions, but in a very unexpected way. HelloFresh makes their delivery service tailored to you and your schedule as you can select the day of the week you want it to arrive and change as needed. Arriving right to your door in recyclable, insulated packaging, eat well and live well. The total cost is pretty impressive. Compared to paying for a week's worth of groceries, you will be paying fewer than $10 per serving and the shipping is free. And as a simple, sophisticated listener, the price is even better. For a total of $30 off, visit HelloFresh.com slash sophisticated. Sophisticate 30 and enter Sophisticate 30 as your promo code. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Sophisticate 30 and enter Sophisticate 30. Visit the show notes for a direct link and all of these details. Okay, I don't know about you, but I am excited to talk about this week's Petite Plaisir. This week's Petite Plaisir is a book that recently came out this last this last September, and it's titled In Paris, 20 Women on Life in the City of Light. And it's written by two authors, one you might recognize from Instagram, Jean Damas, and then we have Lauren Bastide. Both women reside in Paris. And as the title states, they profile 20 women of all different ages and lifestyles and 
I think that's the beautiful part about it. There is a lot of different ideas for enjoying a city that so many love, but they clearly are living it in an individual way, which is unique to the woman who's, who's living their life there. One of the women I would like to introduce you to is the woman who currently runs and owns Shakespeare and Company, the bookshop that many people know, love, and have visited um, right there on the left bank in Paris. Now, she herself is French. Her father was the individual who initially started the bookstore, and he is American. Um, But she then um, also has a little bit of British in her, as she has a lovely British accent, according to how the book is written. I have not heard her speak. But those are the kind of profiles you're getting. You're getting women who come from all different different walks of life and how, and the different jobs, different life experiences. And I think what you'll find, at least this is what I found. And I whipped through this book in a couple of days. I shared, um, it's a few weeks ago when I finished it up. I finished it in the bathtub. I think I just stayed in that bathtub until it was done. The bubbles were all gone and it was just, I just was taken back to Paris. And as well as the profiles, you'll find little vignette, two page little glimpses into Parisian life that the, that the authors want to share with you. So it reminds me a little bit of how to be a Parisian wherever, wherever you are, love style and bad habits, because it has those singular or double pages just of specific lifestyles that are, are often thought of when we think of Paris. So if you enjoyed How to Be a Parisian Wherever You Are, I think you would enjoy this book as well. However, with much more personalized um, perspective from these 20 women. And I'll include a link to the podcast episode I did on that book, How to Be Parisian Wherever You Are, because if you're interested in this book, you're probably going to enjoy that podcast episode if you haven't already listened to it. All right. So the book again is titled In Paris, 20 Women on Life in the City of Light. And um, again, I think uh, you'll enjoy it. It's hardback. It's a smaller book, but not too small. And yeah, happy reading. (laughs) I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, before we wrap up today, I have a few reviews I just want to give a quick shout out to and a big thank you to for the podcast. The first review that I'd like to give a thank you to was shared by Heather, um, and she titled it The Life-Changing Magic of Shannon. Well, you are very generous, uh, Heather. She writes, The Simple Sophisticate is the perfect balance between thought-provoking self-help and fun-inspiring ways to to bring joy into our daily lives. Full of ideas on how to be chic, confident, and true to who we really are, this podcast has helped me to celebrate being an independent woman and cultivate the life I truly want for myself. So many great ideas, big and small, are packed into each episode. Every time I listen, I gain something positive to add to my own simply luxurious life. Not only is the content outstanding, but Shannon's voice is soothing and pleasant. Listening to her is akin to enjoying the ideas and advice of a wise girlfriend. She and her podcast are absolutely delightful. Heather, thank you so much. And part of the reason I wanted to share this particular review with listeners is that I felt it tied into today's topic. We are each living our own unique lives. And we may do it as an independent woman who is not married or or is divorced or widowed. Or we may do it as someone who is married or someone who is married with kids. Um, We can all live well. It really just comes down to living consciously. And so I thought that tied in well with today's topic. So thank you, Heather, for your very specific review. I deeply appreciate it. And your your words are just truly humbling. The second review I'd like to share with you comes from Rachel. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, she actually emailed this to me, and I'm sharing this with her permission, is she titled the email, New Reader, Podcast Lover. Her, her review actually talks a lot about the blog. So if you've never visited the blog, this review will give you a glimpse as to how the two really go together, but also what you may find on the blog if you haven't stopped by. I stumbled upon your blog a few months ago when searching how to live a simpler but fulfilling life, and I absolutely adore it. I even got another girlfriend hooked. While I have always known the concept that quality over quantity is preferable, you have pushed me to be more mindful of my choices and actually use this in my everyday life. With growing up in South Louisiana and being of French and Cajun descent, I have always had a fascination with the French. 
I do a lot of work in New Orleans and have begun to discover true French gems throughout the city. It is amazing what you can find when you open your eyes to it. Because of this, I can now enjoy an authentic almond croissant or pain au chocolat and a café au lait as a part of my work day more frequently. I have visited France, Paris in particular, but your posts have given me a new perspective of a city that I have considered my favorite, but could not put my finger on why. Your post of your stay in Paris and the ones at Hotel Particular had a special place in my heart. My now husband and I were married at that hotel in July, so we must have just missed each other. I thought I would share the impact you have had on my outlook and my ability to now incorporate little pleasures into my daily life. Bon journée. Rachel, I just want to say, first of all, congratulations on being newly married. What a beautiful place to be married. It's funny that you share that because on my first day there at Hotel Particular, it was in early June or in late June, I actually went the wrong way out of the hotel and started walking down the steps to the left. And there was a couple getting their wedding pictures taken. I had no idea it was a a wedding destination. And the more people that I shared that with and have talked to, and as you have shared here, have have revealed that to me. And the backdrop, of course, has the Eiffel Tower in the backdrop. And it's this beautiful little, well, you know, and congratulations. So thank you for your very kind words. And thank you for sharing with your girlfriend. That is how the blog and the podcast have grown Um, over the years by sharing what you guys love. And if you as a listener enjoy this podcast as well, share what you love so that if a potential listener tunes in or stops by, they'll know what they're going to discover. Thank you so much to everyone who's left a review. There'll be more to come in upcoming episodes. All right, guys, I want to wish you a wonderful week and thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pre-order Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, which will be released on November 13th, 2018. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is now available in paperback, as well as ebook and audio version versions on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, or wherever ebook and audiobooks are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.